Okay, it's time to put an electric motor on our generic Chinese quad. Now, the motor I'm going to use is this. It's a 500 watt motor that I got for £20 off free of eBay. Then I had to buy three other bits, this drive, this chain, and the drive cog on the motor there that I got from Fun Bikes. It's their 96 mini electric quad drive set. And I paid £21.60 for those three bits. It fits nicely in the 500 watt motor. Fun bikes sell uh, 800 watt motors. I think they're about, I can't remember actually, about 70 pounds or something. So not excessive. But then this was uh, on sale on eBay for 20 quid. So I went for the 20 quid version. So we have 20 pounds and then 21 pounds 60, 41 pounds 60. And then this throttle here was um, 10 99 11 pounds. So in total for... £52.60, I've got the entire drive set that I'm going to need for that bike. And now remember that bike was £220, so we're talking about £270, certainly less than £300 to get ourselves an e-trike. Now the thing to do now is to get the rear axle off. So what we're going to do is uh, drop out the subframe actually, it's going to be easiest that way I think. And to do that we remove the basket mudguards wheels and there are six bolts holding in the subframe. And like I said, if you watch the video on how to make this then it's really easy. If you didn't, then the retaining bolts for the basket are here and here. The subframe retaining bolts are against the frame back there. We also need to loosen the brake cable and the um, the rail set cable. Let's get to that. Okay, so now we've dropped out the subframe, we can get the wheels off. And this comes with these really cute white plastic caps, actually. The caps just prise off. There we go. Undo those bolts. Okay, time to remove the axle. Now, don't forget to make a note of how this stuff goes around. So, the prongs are facing that way, away from me, which is facing forward. And you'll notice that this one has a little tab on it, and that's where the brake connects. And there's the gear cluster on the left-hand side, and the drive wheels on the left-hand side. That gear cluster has the large cog to the centre, and the small cog facing to the left-hand side. Brakes on the right-hand side. And you need to mention that to yourself, and make a note of that some, somehow, so when you come to put this back together, you know which way around all this stuff goes. Now, if we twist the axle round, you see there's two little retaining nuts there and obviously we need to undo those. When we've undone those retaining bolts we can remove the axle by gently tapping it with a rubber mallet. Okay so that's the axle. Now clearly this section which is the drive cog and that which is the brake disc were in the middle and they're free to slide off otherwise you wouldn't get this in through the back stay there. Now I need to fit that to this. Incidentally, this is what they wanted 150 quid for, this bit here. So I have this available to me, but that went on. Now I've taken it off because this is full of plastic and grease and I'm going to do some welding which will ruin that. So I've taken that off to protect it and I'm left with that lump of steel and I have to put this onto there. Now you can buy these flanged already and pre-drilled to the size that you would want them for, but they're very much more expensive. Remember I paid six pounds for this. If you get it pre-done, then you're gonna pay something like 20, 25 pounds for. So if you don't have uh, a welder, then you're gonna to have to pay a little bit more, but it is just a bit that slides on there between the gear and the brake. That's it, that's the axle modification done. Now we can screw that back on and put everything back together. Axle back in the subframe with its new drive cog attached. Now we need to put the motor on something. So I've got a bit of one mil steel plate and I've cut the motor slots in it. So these are eight mil slots and then I've cut a little angle on so that it fits there. And you can either bolt or weld that on. I'm obviously gonna weld it, but if you drilled it out, you could bolt it on. Now, if you don't know to cut those slots, let's say we want an eight millimeter slot, then you get two, an eight millimeter drill, and you drill two holes eight millimeters apart at the center. Join them up with a round file, and then flatten them off with a flat or square file, and you get these nice slots. That means that we can move that motor 
backwards and forwards and you've got a little adjustment there. Anyway, I'll weld that on. If you can't weld, don't want to weld or hate welding, drill it and bolt it. And there it is back in its axle. Now if you think about it, we didn't actually do that much. We put this cog on and we put this mounting plate on so that we could fasten the motor. That's all we've done. Now it's ready to go back into the trike and give it a go and see if it actually works. So there it is all back together with its new motor in place and all I've got to do now is put the electronics and the battery which turns out to be really a problem of where to sight them. Beyond that it's plug and play. So there it is finished. Now we often do things in the car park and that's mostly because what we make is can or not road legal? But this thing is road legal according to British laws. It's a um, power assist pedal. It's limited to 3.7 miles an hour. That's the limit in the UK for a throttle electric bicycle. So it's limited to that. It's pedal power assist. So it's perfectly legal for me to take this on the road. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to Asda. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that caused quite a stir. Everybody in the park had to have a go. <laughs> we even passed a couple of people on the road and we just smiling away at what we were doing. So it's really cool. Now, I did that because I was given the bike and asked to do it, okay? But it is really inexpensive. So the bike would have cost 220 if you want to buy it. And it's on eBay. There's, it's just loads of them. Like I say, it's a generic Chinese bike and you can get loads of them from absolutely everywhere. The um, rear chain sprocket and the front chain sprocket that went onto the motor and the chain itself I bought as a set and that was £21.60. Call it £22. The electronics was just off of eBay and that was um, £10, actually uh, £10.99, call it £11. And the motor again was an eBay motor, it's a 500 watt motor and it cost me £20. So all in all that bike has cost me £283, or rather would have cost me £283. So if you want to make it, £283. Now, I welded stuff, but that stuff that I welded could be equally bought and bolted on. So I got all the chain gear from Fun Bikes who do mini quads and it was a 96 electric mini quad that I actually based it on. If you uh, can't weld or don't want to weld then that rear uh, sprocket that can be got uh, from a company called Simply Bearings. So if you put these in a web search you'll come across them. Uh, you'll pay about £26 for the cog if you have it with the flange already on. So if it's the flange on the right diameter, a grub screw so you can just slide it on the rear axle where we welded it and then that would be that price. So it would go up by about £20. So you're talking about £300 for any skill level. If you've got the skill level of uh, being able to drill a hole, £300 will get you an electric trike on the road and ready and running. If you can um, weld a little bit then you're talking about £280. And I thought that was absolutely awesome. And the, it is a lot of fun. It, it is going to be our way of going up to Asda from now on. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to subscribe.